uh, food time now, and it just smells delicious. It looks delicious. All the it right sounds really are coming from our right yeah, here. Yes, Phil Vickery is making us the perfect side to your winter dinners. Of course, mash. And you mash. are apparently the king of mash. However, <laughs> Craig says you've got tough competition. I'm saying he's okay at mash. I mean, he's grand. You know, if you want to mash off, we can do it, Phil, but not well, today. Uh, you know, I've been cooking it a long time. However, it doesn't make <laughs> yeah, it doesn't that. make you an expert, hey, does it? A long time doesn't mean a good time. <laughs> exactly. Oh. But do you know what? Joking aside, some of the mash you could buy now, the frozen pellets, I think, are amazing. The ready mash made uh, in in supermarkets in the, in the chilled aisle, fantastic. And years ago, I had a friend of mine called Steve, and he worked for a ready meals company, and they put in this. I'm not going back 25 years. A machine as long as this studio, plus a bit longer. Potatoes went in one end. They were washed, peeled, mashed, steamed, and then piped out the other end. Perfect. No way. And all these frozen ones you can buy come from those machines. And they're amazing because they just get the right potatoes at the right time of year. But does it have all the butter and Exactly what well, it can do. So here they are. We'll, we'll come on to these in a second. So here we are. So, well, a bit of, uh, what do they call it, cabbage, like champ. Uh, there's chicken with an olive oil mash, which uh, I put parmesan and also an olive oil. Great with fish and then a bog standard on the sausage mash. Now, nothing about this is bog standard. Potato. So if you you can start where you like. Oh, I'm going to talk about potatoes. You're going now. the egg. No, I'm not. I'm going for everything actually. So we didn't put Listen, one on yours. Don't, don't, don't worry. judge me. I'm having don't a lovely worry. time. Potatoes. Here you go. So I, for my mashed potatoes, I use King Edward, Marfona, Desire, Marius Piper. They're quite good. Now, when I was a young chef, <laughs> you had to actually have. Oh, a potato for certain things. Nowadays, all the packets they tell you what they're good for. Yes. The other thing they say is cut them. Now, um, there's a starch in potatoes called amylose. It's one of the starches, which is um, once you rupture those cells of starch and you overcook them or don't cook them correctly, we'll come on in a second, it, it makes them go gluey. So sometimes when you have that gluey texture, it's because right. those starches are exploded. OK? I, I so know when, exactly what you mean. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's really now, when unpleasant. I was a kid, my mum, if that was the case, she'd put half a teaspoon of baking powder in and it would just lighten it again, even though it's 50 odd years ago, if it went gluey. Mm -hmm. But here's a quick thing. Peel potatoes, cut them in regular sized pieces. I read a piece of research where it said it's an inch square, it doesn't make no difference to me. Um, and then wash them again. So you're getting the starch off straight away. So that, again, it alleviates the problem of going gluey. Cold water, up to the boil, and then you want to cook them, well, I call it a rough simmer, not raging boil, because what happens is the outsides fall off before the inside's cooked. Then you mash it, it'll go gluey again. So you need to go on, a, on a, what I call a regular boil, which means just running over for about 15 to 20 minutes. The smaller you cut it, obviously the quicker they'll cook, but it can also let more starch. Is in. it OK to go cubed if Absolutely. you're in a hurry? Rough, rough like that is fine, mm -hmm. but just be careful because they will cook. Golden rule, when you're um, checking a potato when it's cooked in a pan, you always use a blunt knife. You never use a sharp knife because it gives you a wrong reading, because a sharp knife goes through anything. Yes. A blunt knife doesn't. So if I just press that now, you'll see, I'll just show you. If I just press it into there now, it just breaks apart. If you had a sharp knife, that wouldn't do that. It would just go straight through. Yeah. Yes. So you can tell if it's raw. Really good point. Once potatoes are boiled, I then put them back into the pan, like this one here. I'll just show you there, or you can see it on top. This one with the cabbage in, Phil, is yeah. so nice. Yeah, again, very simple. And then I just shake my, the pan around just to get rid of the moisture there. Oh. OK? Now... That's cold cannon. It is cold cannon, mm. yeah. So I have to be very careful and make sure it's the right for you. It's a very old Irish so. dish, going back to the 1700s. Oh, there you right. go. Yeah. There and you so go. that's why you didn't want the egg on it. Cabbage and potato. The egg has no place on it. <laughs> <laughs> now, so once you boil your potatoes, mm. and this, they're in this state here, let me turn that off quickly, that one there. Here's the thing. Now, I still use a masher like this. My mum used to have one, she's still got hers. Similar ones with holes in. And when you mash the potatoes one of these, what you're not doing is breaking it up too much. You're breaking it up so it actually comes into, into small, like, a pieces. I've, I've not seen one like that. I've only, I've only seen the one with the holes. Yeah. Exactly. Is that better? No, they're, they're pretty much the right. same, but the point I'm making is, if you break the potatoes up one of these, you're only using a, sl sm a small amount of pressure. You put them into, a, into a, a food processor, it goes so fast it breaks the starch granules, that makes it go gluey. It turns into paste, it's really weird. It turns weird. into yeah. a right. paste. Yeah. Uh, that's why it goes gluey. Okay. Mm. Now, you can use one of these, which is what we call a moolie, if you've got one. We used to use these in the restaurant all the moolie. time. For a fish soup as well. Basically, it's one of those little things you put in and the potato goes through. But again, you're not, you're not using a mechanical, apart from that bit there, the pressure's very light. OK. You can also use one of these, which is a, a, a press. And my mum bought me one of those for Christmas yep. one year because she swears by this. But they I work. find it quite faffy. It is You've faffy. got to get them in and then I'd just rather get stuck in with it the... It is faffy. So yeah. I use one of these because, I, as again, go to the edge of the pan and then I use a whisk just to bring it all together. I'll show you that in a second. Ah. Now, if your potatoes do go a bit overcooked and they're gluey, you can push it through a sieve like this. 
takes a bit of time, but it will bring it back. Okay. It's very rewarding. I like to do that. It takes a lot of time, <laughs> not hassle. <laughs> now, what, just for fun. Yeah. I've got some... a day off. <laughs> some spuds. So when you get to this stage here, which I've mashed, as you can see, I then add butter and milk together. Oh, so you... ah. It just, it just melts quicker, doesn't it? Just goes That's in quicker. That's good. No, OK. When Good you're a chef, hat. it just saves you a lot of time. Oh, yeah. fucking about. And we'll add just enough to bring it together. And as you'll see, as I bring that, that together... I just could just eat just that. Just yeah. that. It's fine. Now, bear in mind, as potato puree cools, it will thicken up because the starch grains start to set again, like custard. It thickens. Right. So you need to add a little bit more now, knowing that it's going to thicken oh, see, up. See, I've never put the butter and the milk yeah. in the whole combo. Yeah. Now, I'm, I like more milk than butter. Purely because I think it's, it's very nice, but it's just, it can be a bit too rich. And you'll see, as I mix it in now, and I use the whisk at this point, if I do whisk up, you'll see, it just comes together beautifully, like, like that. And then you season ah, salt and pepper at that stage. So see, this has blown my butter, mind. Because salt right and butter Exactly. No, you're always right. at the end. Gotcha. You use ground pepper, not cracked pepper, yeah. and you use salt, because that gives you an instant flavour mm. and instant taste. You can't have it without pepper, can no, you? No, you can't. Sorry, you don't... You use the powdery pepper, not the... Always. One. Yeah, because otherwise, it's like granular salt. No, sea salt, you put it in now, that just takes 20 minutes to dissolve. So, <sighs> 20 minutes is too salty. So, I always use crunch. table salt, unless you can see it. Phil, you're OK with okay. this, you know? I'm not OK. <laughs> now, let's, let's move on quickly. Wow. So, again, basic it's mash here. Nice first no. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. <laughs> Put him in his place. Thank you. So rather than using right, uh, boy. butter, mm -hmm. I use mm. extra, extra virgin olive oil. So that's this one here, that one there, and parmesan cheese and parsley. Mm -hmm. So you get a softer, almost like you can taste the olive oil and the parmesan, but it's not heavy with butter. So that's yeah, almost the nice, version. but I prefer. I do like it, but the buttery one is got perfect. That. But for fish, a light dish, it works really, oh, yes. really well. Yeah. And then of course we've got a bit of. Um, a this bit is of this is the winner for me. So in this pan yeah. here, I have. Yeah. Savoy cabbage and onions, touch of oil, a little bit of water, lid on, steam it until it goes nice and soft, take off the lid, dry the moisture off, put it in. Again, more butter, olive oil, whatever you like. But I cannot stress enough, get rid of the water, chop them up and wash them, and also always use a blunt knife. Okay. So here's my overview. Yep. These are posh ones. Yep. The parmesan, that's dinner yep. time. This is lunch time. Yep. And this one's all day. <laughs> All back day from the pub. Oh, back from the pub. Mm. There you go. Back from the school Very run. Good job. Let's go now. Anything mm. with gravy wins, doesn't it, really? <laughs> Amazing. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Absolutely. Brilliant. Delicious. Oh, mash is the greatest this, comfort yeah. food. Um, if you're also mad for mash, you want to recreate any of Phil's dishes, just head to our This Morning app for all the recipe details. And you really should do, because this, yes. this is good stuff. I might just have that bowl, you know. There you go. There you go.